Welcome back. We left off the last video with some significant updates to the rising front end and noting how important that is to the design overall. Next, I reassembled the front end, the leading link, and mounted the suspension system and the tire in the front. Next would be mounting the rear tire, of course, so here I have put the rear tire into place and I'm getting ready to hard mount it. In a previous video, I cast and machined the rear wheel hub and rear wheel mounts. So next I need to connect those to the frame here. I cut these vertical pieces and jigged them into place. And then added these extensions to the bottom of the frame. Next, these angled pieces form the last major part of supporting the rear wheel. This first phase of the prototype will have no rear wheel suspension which is what is meant when I say it has a hardtail. And there is extra room here left to experiment with my drive system. I was pretty happy with the way this was starting to look. I do anticipate having to regularly remove and re-add the rear wheel to remove the engine or to upgrade various parts. So I didn't want to weld these parts to the frame. So I decided to make them removable with bolted gussets. I made some templates out of cardboard first and then cut those pieces out of one quarter inch thick plate steel with my plasma cutter. I measured, marked, and then center punched them to prepare for drilling and then drilled first pilot holes in each piece. And here they are with all the pilot holes drilled. I then clamped those pieces to the frame and used those to start the holes in the frame. To ensure I drilled those holes straight through and perpendicular to the bars, I clamped a drill guide to the frame and moved it for each and every hole. That worked well actually, and the result was nice straight holes for each one. And the result of the first of the four plates. I was happy with the way this turned out, but man it was a lot of work. Each hole took a significant amount of time, as well as quite a bit of strenuous effort. On the back side it looks great. The next bracket is also completed. And finally, the other side. So after hours of drilling, 38 holes. At this point, I was eagerly anticipating a rolling chassis now. But to get to that point, I needed to make sure everything was lined up properly. So I started work next on a nice alignment jig. Starting off with four 12 foot, two inch by four inch steel beams, I began chopping. These were heavy bars. Using my abrasive metal chop saw, I cut these to the appropriate lengths. These were thick cuts and each took a bit of time. It's necessary to use large, stiff beams for frame jigs and alignment jigs as they must resist the twisting caused by the welding. So here's the first part of the alignment jig. This assembly will hold the front spindle straight and parallel with respect to the rear spindle. And here's the front end being held in that alignment assembly where you can clearly see the leading links and the brake calipers. Lifting the bike and putting the front end on, we see this now. Here you can see the spindle resting in the V blocks of the front alignment jig. The spindle is obviously extra long here so it can reach the V blocks on the front end alignment stand. Next, we are onto the rear wheel alignment jig. After much cutting, aligning, and welding, we now have the following. In the case of the rear wheel, the spindle is a much larger diameter, two and a quarter inches. This is for reasons you'll see later. The small cups on the end are just aluminum pieces with a groove machined into them that matches the spindle diameter. And the whole thing has a three quarter inch rod threaded on the ends going through it. So onto the actual aligning then. For starters, a string is placed at the center of the front and rear wheels and along the center line of the bike. It makes noticing misalignments much easier. The view from the rear wheel, after a lot of tweaking and tapping, it seems we have some pretty good alignment. And from the front too, looks pretty good. I decided this was good enough since I would only be tack welding the frame at this point. So the full frame jig would just be completed later. With the alignment now done and the rear wheel completely mounted, for the very first time the bike's entire weight is now resting on the wheel spindles. And then of course lowered onto the ground and resting on its wheels for the first time. It's my baby's first steps. 
I now officially had a rolling chassis. Around this time, Kickstarter was starting to become a thing. I'd been thinking about attempting to utilize it for a while, and uh, was invited to go on a motorcycle podcast that had a decent audience, so I thought this would be an opportune time to try it. At this time, though, Kickstarter was still a small thing, and was used mostly for artistic projects, albums, or maybe small indie film projects. My Kickstarter had a goal of $40,000, which was the largest goal they had seen at that time, and they were actually kind of hesitant to even try it. Now, million dollar plus goals are common, but back then nothing like that was happening yet. First threw together a pretty crappy Kickstarter video to try to be ready for that radio podcast. But within a few days, made a much more professional quality video with a great videographer friend, Nick. I encourage you to check out that Kickstarter video. Here's the link to it. This is a great overview of the potential the recumbent platform offers what I'd like to do with my project, and the history of the motorcycle market. I'm pretty proud of that video. Note, this Kickstarter ended years ago, so don't bother contributing. Ultimately, of course, my Kickstarter failed, likely for many reasons. As I mentioned, of course, it was the largest goal yet on Kickstarter, and was a project unlike those typically hosted there at the time. And this was well before Kickstarter expanded, and numerous clones popped up. But my first video was pretty terrible. I did a poor job marketing the whole thing, and frankly there weren't a lot of great rewards that could go along with contributions. One big thing that did come from the Kickstarter project, though, was a Seattle area motorcycle engine manufacturer reached out to me and offered to donate an engine to my project. So a few days after my Kickstarter was launched, I had received a call from the owner of Crazy Horse Motorcycles which manufactured 100 cubic inch V-twins, saying that they wanted to donate an engine to my project, but wanted to meet me first. They flew me out to Seattle on short notice to meet. I got along very well with the team, and the owner offered me a job to come out and manage the design and production of a new motorcycle they wanted to launch designed around their engine. In the process, gaining all the skills necessary for launching my own bike. Well, I had just been laid off from my IT job again, I wasn't married, and I had no children to make a cross-country move like that difficult. And though I would leave my family and friends behind, it sounded like a great opportunity. I packed up almost everything in my shop, but I sold off a few things I wouldn't need because the crazy horse shop had them, and moved across country. My workbench is actually made for great protective shipping boxes for my bike, my mill, and my lathe. I still can't believe I fit most of my tools, my books, and my two motorcycles in this single shipping container. I used nearly every cubic inch of that thing. With everything packed in a 20-foot shipping container, which would be shipped separately and require a crane to load onto a flatbed, I packed up my car for the road trip, said my goodbyes, and hit the road. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks again for watching and sticking with the project, of course. I hope you're all enjoying these. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check back soon.